There are countless leadership development and emotional intelligence assessments, most reminding us to live by the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. But let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk because my guest wants us to consider a more inclusive perspective, the platinum rule that recognizes the importance of individual preferences. And we're going to do this by utilizing the power of the Enneagram. Hang tight. We'll get that cleared up first. A pocket-sized pep talk, the podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jealous. Today's guest, Carl Hebenstreit, is an executive coach, leadership, team, organizational development consultant, and international speaker with 25 plus years of experience coaching leaders and their teams to work better together and consistently exceed their organization's goals. He holds a PhD in organizational psychology and is the author of two books, The How and Why, Taking Care of Business with the Enneagram, and Nina and the Really, Really Tough Decision. Happy to have you with us. Welcome to the show, Carl. Thank you so much, Rob. Thanks for having me. You bet. And it's a pleasure. I want to dive right in. I want to get at this Enneagram. So yeah. tell me tell me what the Enneagram is. I, I got a head start. I do my homework, but I want yeah. others to hear this. So it's a framework or system. It's uh, People mostly think about it as personality, but it's really motivation. Hmm. So it's the motivation, the drivers that underlie every single thing you have done and are doing and continue to do in your life. So it's this primary motivation that you have decided is the one that works for you and you continue to use it throughout your entire life. And that there are one of nine different primary motivations that each human being has. So it's the system that identifies those, defines them, shows the interactivity and interrelationships between them. There are attachments, there are lines, there are wings, there are all these different things that come together. And it truly really helps to help people understand about themselves become more self-aware about why they do the things they do and also find out why other people do things the way that they do and yeah. that it's truly really okay. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, and, and congratulations because uh, you know, right yeah. off the bat, sometimes, you know, we, we got to learn how to say what we do and what we've got in about 60 seconds or less. And you, uh, you came under the bar just beautifully there. Excellent. Yeah, well, it's a you know, I I get I'm pretty sure I could ask you that question again and say, take 10 minutes and you have to oh, yeah. kind of squeeze it to get it into the 10 minutes. So yeah, give me two hours. I'll do it in two hours. <laughs> Will you do workshops on this? I do. I do workshops on them. I just did one, believe it or not, in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean. So I did it. Yes, on a cruise ship. On a cruise ship. I was invited to do, a, it's a one hour, I did a one hour version of my workshop. And I taught about 250 people that attended all about themselves and their loved ones and some some mm. of their not so loved ones. Yes. Well, I'm hereby jealous. I, I've been floated that um, opportunity. Oh, pardon the pun. Uh, there you go. Was not intent- I swear that wasn't intentional. <laughs> But uh, I, I see I, what you did there. <laughs> uh, I've been given that opportunity, but I got it right before the pandemic. And the mm-hmm. the line I was working with uh, was struggling. And let's put it this way. We haven't reengaged in that conversation quite yet, but but we'll get it hasn't, there. That hasn't floated yet, right? No, we haven't <laughs> floated it by me yet. Uh, you know, I, I, here's the next $64,000 question. Okay, we know what it is. Um mm-hmm. I'm sure you get this is one A and one B. One B is, huh? Well, now I've heard of Myers Briggs and I've heard yeah. of DISC. What makes this different? Now you gave me a little piece. You said and it kind yeah. of goes through the motivation of exactly. what we do, but but can you separate it a little bit more? Because if I had it, I'm, I'm not a big Myers Briggs person. You know, everybody's fine. I I like mm-hmm. Myers Briggs too, but it's not that I live on any of these models. It's yeah. that. I've seen them and I want to get, I, I want to figure out what makes this one different than the yeah. more cl- let's, I think disc is probably the, the best known. So maybe mm-hmm. if we just separate it from disc. Absolutely. Well, each model, each framework that's out there has its own purpose and its own value and its own validity and its own use when people are ready for it. So for example, the ones that you already identified Myers-Briggs and disc are behaviorally 
identifying models. So they identify different behaviors that people are most likely to have and exhibit. We don't know why they're doing it. We have no idea why someone's an extrovert or an introvert in a certain situation, or is using thinking or feeling in a certain situation, or is dominant, or is steady or conscientious, or any of these different nomenclatures that they use. So the Enneagram helps us to identify why these behaviors are being exhibited. So that's the difference between all the systems. Well, and it makes sense because, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a trainer like yourself, or a professional speaker. And if you really want to get somebody on board, we, we don't just tell them how we have to tell them, um, uh, not just why, but the reason why, you know, it's, it's interesting, exactly. Carl, uh, in the last couple of years, I, I, I look at the fact that I went, you know, almost 3 million miles around this country, around this world, delivering mm -hmm. seminars and teaching people how to sell. And I never really got to the part about why we do it and yes. sort of the inside. And there I am preaching. We do this. We say this, we go here. Uh, and what percentage of the audience was I losing who said, well, that sounds interesting, but I'm not sold yeah. on wanting to do this right now. Exactly. So the why becomes really critical to me. I, I, you know, it only took me a few years to figure it out, but how are we not leading with that? You know? Yeah. Simon Sinek came up with that, uh, the golden circle idea where you always says start with why and then go to the how and then finalize with the what. And I think we're very much tempted to go to the what from the get go. This is the what, this is the what, this is the solution. This is the end point. Yeah. So it's really difficult, but it's very important to start with why always, because people need to connect to the why, the purpose, the reason, understand yeah. why this is so important and, and what they're going to be able to accomplish with it. Okay. You, uh, I'm, I'm becoming a fan now. Okay. Uh, help me out with this part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was first in introduced to some of these models and I had different vendors coming to me uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, as a sales trainer, you know, walking around with my sales books and things like that, yeah. I thought I, I was really putting up my hand and going, eh, you know, I don't know if this is really a sales model. And then I realized something. It was sort of like a Reese's cup, you know, where you get the peanut butter on the chocolate that mm -hmm. we in the sales community and that we've got a lot of salespeople listening to us, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be listening to us. We, we in the sales community used to put our hands up and go, well, I don't, you know, I, that's not a sales model. I don't need to learn about me and, and how to read the personality of others and how to adapt to that. I've got to sell my product. Right. And um, I, I know one guy who felt that way because it was me. And then I realized, wait a second, if I don't understand the personality of another individual, how do I know? What pace to use on a lot of the right. questions that I'm asking? We, I mean, how many times, Carl, have you been asked, how long do you schmooze with a person? Right. And depends. I see you smiling. Because, totally depends. Yeah. Right. Because the because how do you answer that question when somebody says that to you? 4.2 minutes? I mean, what's your answer? <laughs> so it really depends. It totally yeah. depends on the person. Some people yeah. want schmoozing and some people want, no, cut to the chase. Right. Yeah. Right. Welcome to the Enneagram, right? Um, right. Ex you know, and and think of how limited we are if we say, well, let's just leave that off. Well, let's just have the chocolate bar right now. We don't yeah. really know that. Now, um, as you just said, if I've got more of a dominant individual, I better step on the accelerator. And if I yeah. walk into some of, you know, we work with a lot of you know, internal or external wholesalers, they'll go down a hallway of cubicles. They're connecting socially with the first mm -hmm. one they're pulling back with the second one they're bringing exactly. numbers to the third one yeah. uh so uh you're reading I'm the assuming... room yeah go ahead you're reading the room you're seeing what each person needs right and it's diverse it's a diverse right. need that each person has yeah right so next question and by the way i haven't even gotten to my questions yet these are okay these are all just looking at you right now i'll get to my list of questions in a second Great. But my next question is, how much time do you spend when you when somebody uh, be, get, becomes uh, goes through? I assume there's some sort of an assessment, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I've gone through the assessment. How much time do I spend learning about me, and how much time do I spend? Is there a, a way to spend time on saying I want to learn about how to read that room, like you just said? 
Yeah. Uh, is that in the assessment, in, in the information I'd be getting? So the assessment is going to focus on you because we always start with the individual first, right? right? Self-awareness before we get to the awareness of others. Okay. So the, any assessment is really, any assessment that you use is really going to be focusing on you. It then goes into going into like a workshop environment where you start learning about who the others are. And usually you'll go through it with a team that you're working with, maybe even your stakeholders. It depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish. So the answer to your question always is it depends. And it, you'll always start with you first. So getting the grounding in your own needs and motivation and drivers and blind spots and strengths and possible derailers, mm -hmm. then understanding the whole entire system. And then by understanding the whole entire system, then you start to understand the others. But ultimately, they have to tell you where they fit. So you might understand the whole system, understand that there are nine different perspectives, motivations, energies, but you can't predict or identify what somebody else is without them telling you or without you having a really good relationships with them to find out where their, what their values are, what their true drivers are. Got it. And uh, you know, we interrupt this program to remind people, as you've just heard, that because I know, I know the people that I work with, mm -hmm. they are chameleons. They want to immediately focus on the other individual and mm -hmm. change colors and adapt to that speed. Yes. But you've just given us a very good reminder that that's coming, folks, but there's tremendous value on figuring yourself out first. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, and I think where some of the other programs went wrong, if you don't mind an amateur stepping in. And I, I love when people go, no, Rob, but, but let me help you with it. <laughs> so don't worry. So you're allowed to say, what? But I think where some of these other programs went wrong that I saw was uh, there was so much focus on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the sales community, I used to hear the mutter, well, as long as I sell me for the rest of my life, I'm really mm -hmm. in good shape. So, but uh, maybe we can't really turn our attention to others until we really understand who we are. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Makes sense. And Makes what sense. our own needs are, what our own drivers are. Absolutely. All right. All right. So then let's stay, let's stay here a little bit. Uh, you're talking about motivation and, you know, um, what what motive you know how people are motivated talk to that a little bit carl tell me in your words you know you're you're the king of the enneagram here um <laughs> i did not come up with this name by the way new title this is yeah. Rob. <laughs> yeah uh in your words uh what motivates people i'm curious about yeah. that so it was very funny. So today was the launch date for the, this is by no means any, any advertisement or anything like that, but today was the launch date for the Samsung S24. And I tuned into it and I'm like, I wonder what they're going to do here. They're, they're obviously doing a sales job. They want to get people sold on this thing. So how are they going to, I mean, they don't know these millions of billions of people are watching this, this program. They don't know who each person's motivation. So how they're going to address this. And sure enough, it, throughout the entire 45 minutes to an hour that I was watching, they touched on every single person's possible motivation into why they would want to buy that product. And it was fascinating because they didn't dwell on it. It was just like a little hint here, a little glimmer there. And they did it by looking at this is the right thing to do. This is the, the perfect product. It's, it's, it's perfect. Perfectionism. It's, it's right. These are the values that we have. And you want to subscribe to these values, aspire to these values. So you're going to want to buy this product because it meets these values, the you know, innovation and, and the future and all these different things that it does. It's So then they looked about connectivity, connection. So type one is all about perfection. It's the right thing to do. The values, alignment with the values, ethics, morals, whatever it is. Okay. Type two, the energy for type two is around connection, connectivity, connecting with others, collaborating with others. That was a huge message that they were sending in that advertisement as well in that session. Type three is about your productivity, your effectiveness, your efficiency, being the best, meeting your goals. How are you going to be able to do that with this product? Type four is the aesthetics, how beautiful, how unique, how special it is. So it's all about that being different, the differentiation, that niche. Yeah. Then you went into type five. The type five energy is all about the logic, the rational, 
reasons behind it. Um, the data, the evidence, the, the numbers, the details, all that kind of stuff that falls in there. Then protection came up for number six. The energy for six is all about how do I make sure my stuff is safe? So how do I make sure I'm safe? So that's safety, security, being safe and secure, belonging to a, a tribe that helps you be safe and secure, community. Type seven is about options and opportunities, all the different options and opportunities you're going to have to use it in all these different settings, how it's not going to limit you at all because you have the freedom to be able to use this in all these different places. The eight was about control, having the ability to control, having the power, authority, uh, to be able to, to access this and, and, and have more power because of having this tool, this system. And type nine is the ecosystem, keeping peace and harmony and how harmonious everything is going to be and wanting to things not to change. So absence of conflict. So those are the nine primary motivators that, that people have. And, and it was fascinating to see it displayed in a sales environment just today, just a few hours ago, when it was that launch of that new Samsung product. Wow. and how they touched every single point. So any, regardless of each person's motivation listening, their needs were met. Wow. And you think that that was, uh, were they actually following your model or were you just seeing, you know, life imitate art basically? I, I will never know. <laughs> <laughs> I will never know. It was just because when, when I first started seeing, I was seeing two, two of the, the, the energies being primarily focused on. And then I started seeing everything else popping up. Yeah. as the as the presentation continued so i don't know if they had that in mind or if this is just from experience that this is like we need to focus on all these things because our stakeholders are looking at this thing so it's i i will never know that's fascinating actually it'd, it'd probably be worth a, a an email or a message just saying by yeah. the way congratulations and i'm curious yeah. you know um if i can throw a, a fast little model back at you that that's somewhat obscure because i invented it and i just sort of hang on to it when i'm speaking and it's very quick but when i'm trying when i'm talking to a group of people uh, i don't know what's motivating them i kind of yeah. break it into three areas everybody you'll hear a lot of times whether i'm selling you one-on-one -on -one, carl or even if i'm in front of a group the mythical with them comes out that mm -hmm. what's yeah. in it for me it for okay me? Yeah. And, and people that uh get uncomfortable when I say, you know, it's, it's about greed, but in a good way, we, I want somebody in the room who's greedy and says, I hope I get something out of this. Yeah. I, and you need sure to know what that is. The alternative. What's yeah. that? You need to know what that is. They need to tell you what are they exactly. looking to get out of it. So you exactly. can give it to them. Right. But what I break it down into is in three areas. First mm -hmm. one, the, the first one is how it helps people personally. Uh, yep. You know, I know we're at the, you know, tweezer industries, but right now, this is actually going to make things make make it easier to 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 spend more time with the family, you know, whatever. But that's oh, a yeah. personal whiff them. Yeah. Uh, the job one, I think everybody gets. This is going to help you move the documents mm -hmm. quicker or whatever it is. The yeah. third one, I think people leave out, is uh, the corporate one. Meaning, how's this going to help the company? And this yeah. is when we're doing yeah. corporate presentations. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you that I think 99% of my, my audience wants to know how this is going to help the company. Right. But I know if I have 100 people, there are three of them in there. They're usually the ones that are going to write me my check. Exactly. They want to know. <laughs> and I don't want to leave that. I don't want to leave them out. Exactly. They don't come in with signs. Yeah. But I guess that's my crude way of at least yeah. attempting to, to get everybody taken care yeah. of uh, on what the value of what we're going to do is. Yeah. In my no, I think that's a, I think that's a great way of looking at it, and that's that's it's used in organization development all the time. Okay. The other okay. Um, yeah. way to come up with three different ways of looking at it is the people always talk about leadership with the head, heart, and gut model, right? So how do you access the brain? How do you access the feeling, the heart stuff, and how do you access the gut or the action? What are the what is the action that you want them to take? So how do you address it from an emotional perspective, a logical perspective, and then a, this is the action that you want to take? So that's another way of, of breaking it down. Yeah. And by the way, the Enneagram helps to break down in that because there are nine motivation types or energies, and they each, three of them, each fall into each of these centers. Three of them fall into the, the head center, three of them fall into the heart center, and three of them fall into the action or gut or body center. So if I were giving a presentation... Mm -hmm. 
would I want to uh, attempt to at least kind of reach out to that head and heart? And what was the third one? Gut or body or action. Gut. Yeah. My gut. Yeah. Okay. My gut. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yes, is that what absolutely. We're trying to... Okay. That's really interesting. Uh, because, because each, mm -hmm. each one of the nine styles comes from one of those centers. So that's where they're going to be most tied to or aligned to. That's what they're going to be looking Excellent. Yeah, it's maybe yeah. helpful for that. Yeah, and they don't come in with signs. And and the reason why I want I'm you know I I really think you're on to something there, uh, is because uh, what salespeople fail to realize is that um, very often part of the selling process is in front of a group of people. So yeah. I can meet with you and talk to you, but then I've got to take it to the board or the company yes. or so. Yeah. There's always an element of presentation. And uh, these aren't, I mean, uh, in school, we learned informative presentation, persuasive presentation, by the way, how stupid was that? Because <laughs> there's no, to, to me, if I don't want to be informed, I'm not going to listen to you. Yeah. So to me, everything is persuasive. Even right. if I want to teach you about our solar system, first, I have yeah. to persuade you that there's value in learning about the solar system exactly. and we'll why? get to the planets. Okay. Yeah. Start with that. Why? <laughs> right. Right. So what mm -hmm. you're doing here extremely well is beginning to talk about when you lay that out, I don't know who fits into which category, but I want to just, yeah. as I had started, you're filling in the blanks and saying, well, Rob, here's my version of, I don't know who's in that room, but between the three of them, I should have that audience. Exactly. Yes. Just on that cruise ship, right? Yeah. These yeah. people had nothing in common. They, they weren't part of the same company. They weren't part of the same team. They, they all came from different backgrounds, different countries, different whatever. I had no idea what they wanted out of that workshop. Mm -hmm. And part of it is I start off every workshop with asking, what do you expect to get out of here? I need to know this. So I make sure that I can give you what you're looking for because I can't read your minds. Right. I can't predict what you want. I can't look at you and say, oh, you're going to be interested in, in metrics and you're going to be interested in storytelling and you're going to be interested in execution. I have no idea. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, that's the, you know, that's the challenge. It's funny. You know, if we just stay on that for a second, you know, I, I, I have clients sometimes that will want to do a pilot of a workshop and they'll still want to bring in, uh, I want to, you know, they want to bring in this whole mixed audience. I want to bring in people who don't know how to spell selling and I want the grizzled vets. And it's like, you're not helping me out here. I'll take mm -hmm. a whole room of, of people that have never sold. I'll take a whole room of people who have sold for 40 years, but which pace exactly yeah. do we move at when yeah. we have a split audience? So it becomes and I'm just give me 30 more seconds on this. I'll tell you where this really gets challenging. Mm -hmm. We're all trying to help companies implement what they learn. But some people struggle. So what companies traditionally do is they say, all right, we're going to, we're going to give you uh, we've got another workshop coming up and we're putting in five people from uh, three months yeah. ago who didn't get it real well, mm -hmm. uh, almost like a rem remedial punishment. Yeah. And uh, now you got an instructor going, well, okay, uh, I can, I can give you different stories and tell it differently, but which audience do you want me to speak to? Right. So it becomes challenging. All right. I, it does. You got me going on presentations, but, but I want to talk about the Enneagram more. Okay. So, so we, we've been, we've been building it up. Tell me, uh, because I think a lot of people have, have rushed into and I don't want to disparage it, but a personality mm -hmm. model of some sort. Yeah, of, yeah. What do you think um, is the biggest mistake that people make when oh, they're yeah. exposed to a model like that? Yeah. So th I think there are two big mistakes. One big mistake is that people either feel like they're going to be boxed or they go ahead and box others in it. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is that regardless of whether you've taken any personality assessment, people are human beings and they will judge and they will box people based on behaviors that they see just because it's cognitively easier for them, for their brains to deal with it. Oh, this person's a perfectionist. Oh, this person's an extrovert or this person, whatever. And that may or may not be true, right? They're just basing those labels on behaviors that they're seeing in a certain situation. And that's it. First impression, whatever it is. So that's the biggest issue. The biggest issue is, is people fearing that now this box, this label is going to be with them for their life. But the reality is it's already there. So it's great to know what that label is. And it's also great to know how to get rid of that label. 
Because once you realize people have labeled you this because of what you're doing and how you're doing it and why you're doing it, then they can turn around and say, guess what? I don't have to behave or think or be this way in every single situation because every single situation doesn't call for that solution. Each situation is different and may call for one of the eight other solutions, the eight other perspectives. And I'm going to throw people a curveball and not behave like they think I'm going to behave because I'm going to think about it differently. I want to approach it differently. So that label or that box is no longer going to be valid. I'm going to break out of that box. So it's really breaking out of a box, not putting people in a box. Oh, that's interesting. And the second part was, of course, people just labeling people, just guessing what people are, right? That's And we don't do that. We should not do that because we don't know them until we, until we do. Yeah. When, you, when you do an assessment, do you do one... Uh, it- does it matter if I approach it uh, as how I behave at home versus how I behave at you know, on the job? So ultimately, it should be how you behave in your normal home state. And ideally, probably if you think back into your 20s, because up until, you know, as you get older from your 20s, and luckily we're not there yet, right? We're still not in our 20s yet. <laughs> That's what we love about a podcast. (laughs) So people's drivers are ingrained in them in their early childhood. And then the world takes over, right? Then things like there's overlays of this is what the culture demands. This is what my company demands. This is what my teacher demands. This is what my parents demand. This is my whatever. So all these overlays then come into play, which affect your true, the, the, the expression of your true motivation and your drivers. So if you can think back to what your purest motivation was at an earlier age, and strip out those overlays of culture and and familial need and and demand and and all these other demands that are imposed on you. That's your true driver. Okay. All right. Makes sense. The the book is the how and why taking care of business with the Enneagram. Uh, Okay. And and we can find that book on Amazon and it is. Yeah. Oh, good. It's on Amazon, and I think it's it's also available through bookstores too, but because they get them through a distributor. Yep. Good. Good. When did the book come out? So the first version came out in 2016. First okay. edition came out in 2016, and the most recent third edition just came out last year. So 2023, good. after the pandemic, after new insights, after new applications. So there's much more in the new version, the new edition. Yeah. You know, speaking to a point you were making about labeling people, uh, you know, every year um, one of my publishers has an author's retreat and there are mm-hmm. 50, 60 authors there. And needless to say, I'm a, a card carrying extrovert. But mm-hmm. when you get around a group of authors frequently, they're pretty introverted. And uh, mm-hmm. but they just want to clobber me where every time I see them do something that is, you know, uh, where they're performing or they're really outgoing, I go, Hey, mm-hmm. thought you were an introvert. <laughs> and they go, Rub, how many times do we have to tell you that, yeah. that that's our instinct, that's our drive, but that doesn't mean yeah. that we just that we can't finish a sentence or stand up in front of a room. Exactly. Uh, and there I am kind of putting them into a box and they're basically right. saying, Will you knock off the box, please? Yeah. And ex- that, that specific behavior doesn't mean that they're like that all the time. It right. just means, especially as an introvert, that they will extrovert themselves and they will still need a lot of time to re-energize and recharge after that. Yeah. And then, and I'll tell you something else, you know, again, I'm, I'm speaker, this, that, everybody looks at me and it's like, ah, oh, this guy, I'm not comfortable sitting at a table with three people from a, a corporation the night before presentation to and and being on while I'm mm-hmm. eating I uh, I don't rush into a party mm-hmm. and want to meet a whole lot of people I don't know um I'll bring I'm, you know I'm a sales guy I don't mind trying to kind of bring them to me but that's not my instinct either so mm-hmm. uh you know we all I, I and I guess it, the, the next point that we've got to make is that how many people take a test like this and figure, well, I'm just this one thing, I guess. Here's oh, yeah. here's who I am. <laughs> I must not deviate. Doesn't work that way, does it? No, it doesn't. And that's a great point that you bring up because 
the assessment will, will point out what your primary driver, primary motivation is, but we have all eight other styles within us as well. It's an and, it's not an or. So this is your core driver and you have access to these other eight drivers as well. You just need to focus on them, yeah. right? Because your, your first reaction is going to be to go to your default. However, you have these other eight that are still available to you, which may be more helpful in this new situation that you're in front of. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm really glad, and I've never had, we, I think on my 315th podcast right now, I've actually never had anybody on to talk about uh, these particular models. And um, thank you. And, and, and thank you, because you're saying everything I really wanted to hear. And the first, you know, back in the, 90s when i was beginning to get to look at these things it was you are a you know fill in the blank that's it and, you know can i always uh and uh, i think that la that, and I, that may not have been the instructor's fault but the the lack of clarity in yeah. we the audience's minds are one of mm -hmm. the things that makes people uncomfortable about this so i really like when you give it some air here and and remind people that you know, these are indications, Carl, I've always wanted to put, I'm, you know, I'm a process guy too. It may not be this process, but I'm teaching processes, things that are repeatable and predictable and measurable, but that doesn't mean that it's a straight jacket. I've always wanted to, to, and I've, I think I, one of my participant guides, I had a circle, a line and a straight jacket you know, under it, basically reminding them, this is not a straight jacket. People make decisions, not processes, but yeah. we're, how would you like an indicator? How would you like you know, a head start. And mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah. that's from my yeah. processes, that's what I'm trying to do, but I don't want them to feel like I'm putting them in a box of any kind. No. I'm just giving them a no limitation, no limitations like that. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. I'll go back to something that you said earlier about the, okay. we, you spoke about the golden rule and the platinum rule. And yeah. I think that that's, that comes in really handy here because the golden rule is really what's been teaching us to put people in boxes because the golden rule says treat others the way that you want to be treated. So therefore you have your box and you're putting people, okay, this is, everyone's going to be in my box. Everyone's going to be treated the same way I want to be treated. And I think that what we've discovered is that people are different and people want to be treated differently. They have different likes, dislikes, different values, different ethics, different politics, different religions, different ideologies, whatever it is that are not the same as ours. And they obviously don't want to be treated the same way that we want to be treated because they have these different perspectives. So that's where the platinum rule comes in to treat others the way that they want to be treated. And I think that the next step is an, another layer of platinum, which is rhodium, which is not only treat others the way that they want to be treated, but learn from how they want to be treated. Why do they want to be treated that way? And how is that also part of you? Because it is part of you. You're just not paying attention to it. And can you integrate that into there and act upon that? and use it the next time. And because that gives you more, more robustness in, in ability to understand different situations and a, an ability to be effective in different situations. Absolutely perfectly said. And I would bottle that up and say that at every program you deliver, if you're not already delivered <laughs> saying it, I, I mean it, that is so well articulated and said, and I'm, I was just sitting here going, that is that is perfect. That's what people need. That clears things up to me. Um, I want people to, to to go get that book. And when you get the book, my audience knows this, but I'm like a broken record because you're dealing with another author here. Uh, mm -hmm. Get the book, read the book, write a review, do something nice for, for another person. Uh, it's, it's really, we authors, we, you know, we will ask nicely, but it means a great deal. Changes the algorithms. We want reviews. It really does. So get that book, read the book and, and put and one other thing up, but don't worry, Carl, I got it. <laughs> one other thing we don't, Carl doesn't need four paragraphs, put in mm -hmm. two sentences, three sentences yeah. and say something from the gut. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, and, and believe me, you'll be making an author very happy. So very uh, happy. Keep an eye. I on love that. seeing what the takeaways were from different and different people will have different takeaways, which I love. I love to see what different people have taken from it. Good. Yeah. I got one more question for you, but hold tight, folks, because something tells me Carl likes to hear from you too. So we're going to get Carl's contact information out in yeah. just a second. Just give me two lessons 
I, I like finishing up with kind of more of a, 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 an overhead view here. Two lessons you've learned somewhere in your journey that had the biggest impact on your career. So the biggest impact in my career was in my early 20s, early to mid 20s, I guess, when I had to deliver a presentation it was actually a sales presentation, even though it was was not packaged as such. And I failed miserably. Luckily, I had two back to back audiences. And I failed miserably because people came in expecting something totally different. I didn't give them that. And I was devastated. And luckily, I was able to turn that around and figure out that's when I realized that people want different things and started asking, what are you looking for from this presentation? Let me gear this and change this to, to meet your needs, because it's obviously not what I think you want. So that was the biggest, biggest lesson and takeaway. And the other lesson that I've learned is to just go for it. Just go for it. If you have an idea, if you have a dream, if you have a plan, yes, the timing is going to be, you know, figure the right timing out, but don't be afraid to go for it and just take that leap. Uh, the universe and your network are going to be sure that you're going to be successful in it. Yeah. Well, you're preaching to the choir on that one. The alternative is that you you don't take that leap and you think about what could have been. Uh -huh. and for those of us right. who have taken our leaps, Carl, you look like an entrepreneur to me. You sound like <laughs> an entrepreneur. You're talking to an entrepreneur. We, I, what I always tell people two years into my business was if it fails tomorrow, I won't be happy about it, but I'll have the biggest smile on my face because yeah. I tried and I'm not going to be haunted. 20 and you years learned now by what and you learned could have done that what's that yeah and you learned oh yeah yeah boy we yeah. learn a lot you know I, it's like managers i've always told people i don't learn so much from a great manager there's they're, they're great for a reason a lot of what they're doing is seamless i, I can't catch it but boy mm -hmm. you can feel what it feels like to when you have a manager who's not very kind or considerate yeah. or has or, some issues that are get in the way here and they're tremendous lessons because you'll never forget them. You know what it feels like. And that's what yeah. we're talking about right now, Carl. When you Empathy. are doing something like this, if you succeed, wonderful. And if you don't, I'll give you the same hug. And you'll have lessons that will be very clear and yeah. it will serve you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. All right, my man. All right. So how do people get a hold of you? So the, the easiest way is through my website. So the website is www.perform and function. So it's kind of a play on form and function, but you put a per in front of it, perform and function.com. Um, you can send me an email at Carl with a K, K-A-R-L at perform and function.com. I'm also on LinkedIn at R Carl Hebenstreit. So yeah, m many different ways to get in touch with me. Good. And as I said, we'll have it on our um, site as well. Uh, I uh, I want to thank you for for uh, having this conversation. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I I'll you tell do. you the mark of a good conversation from me. Although I hope I'm not insulting any of my other guests. When I walk away and I'm thinking about what you said, when I walk away and I'm and I've learned something new. I'm a guy who's written blogs for 15 years, never mm -hmm. miss, and yet I love a podcast because I get to meet a guy like you, and I get to walk away and I learn something. I. I don't learn as much when I'm writing a blog. I can write it in a closet and I, I still love my blogs, but yeah. um, this to me is why we do podcasts so we can learn and, um, and take something we thought we knew and realize there's a lot more to it that we didn't know. So integrate it and make it even better. Yeah. All right, my man. I want to thank you for coming in. Thanks so much for being on the show. Um, thank you. Robert. Really grateful for, all, for what you taught us and uh, just want you to know that I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. And I look forward to seeing your insights on the Enneagram in a future blog and blog. All right. <laughs> it's a deal. Okay, yes. folks, we'll do it again as well as we can next time. Until then, stay safe. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com.